everyone, I'm going to do some scene reads from The Bones of Wrath Haunted, which is available as an ebook, but in also in Two Bone Anthology 2, out under my middle grade name of TK Rathbone. I'm doing a scene read from 23. Yeah, I muttered, you're right, let's go back to bed. We walked back into our room and the door slammed shut behind us. It was not our room. Wait, isn't this our room? I was confused. We had just walked back into our room, yet it was not our room. The decor, furnishings, everything was different. It had retro, old-style decor. This is definitely not our room, I stated. Andy, there's no door to Mum and Dad's room. Mel stood looking at the wall to the right of the door, and there was definitely no connecting door there. Wait, no, let's check the number on the door. I opened the door, and we walked into the hallway. Same red carpet, same green paint. We looked at the door number across from us, 22. We walked back to Mum and Dad's, 21. We walked back to ours and noticed the door had closed, but still, it read 23. Mel and I looked at each other, perplexed by the situation. I grasped the handle and turned, pushing it open. We stepped inside and found ourselves back in the hallway. What? Wait, what just happened? Mel asked from beside me. Didn't we just go into our room? I looked to my left and saw our door was closed. Hey, excuse me, I heard Mel call and turned. At the end of the hallway stood a white-haired boy that looked to be about our age. Who's that? I muttered before he evaporated into thin air. Did he just... Did he... Did... Mel stuttered. No, I was even more confused. We must have been seeing things. Let's go. I grabbed Mel with one hand and the door handle with the other and in one fluid motion I opened the door, moved a thin, moved a thin side and closed the door behind us. Smoke filled the air. What? <coughs> the... We coughed, poking on the thick cigar smoke that wafted up our nostrils and into our lungs. Hey kid, what are you doing here? Waving my hand in front of my face to clear the air around me, I peered into the room. Who said that? Who are you? What are you doing in our room? Raucous laughter filtered through the haze and my eyes, fo my eyes focused on the men sitting or standing around a table by the window. Your room? One beefy guy at the table replied. He shuffled a pack of cards. This ain't your room, kid. It's the game room. We play cards and drink gin. I recognised their type from old gangster movies, wrinkled three-piece suits, fedora hats and cigars permanently attached to their teeth. I waved away some smoke. No, it's not. It's our room. Room 23 at 2323 Old Beachside Way Motel. More laughter. Nah, kid. It's the 23 Battalion hideout and we want to know how you found it and how'd you get in? They all stood and straightened their clothes. Andy, Mel tugged on my sleeve. I don't know what's happening, but I think we'd better get out of here. I turned my head to her. Why should we? It's our room. I don't think it is, she whispered as the men descended on us. She turned around, flung open the door and dragged me into the hallway. The motel hallway with its red carpet and green walls. The door slammed shut behind us. Now I'm going to do a reading from he who opens this book. Mm. Mm. I mumbled at being dragged from my sleep. I came to. My eyes slowly slid open to an unearthly green glow enveloping the room. What? I blinked and rubbed my eyes. Well, what's going on? I yawned and sat up. The book was hovering calmly in midair, in the middle of my room, surrounded by the eeriest green glow. Mickey. Mickey. What? Who? Mickey. Mickey. I, hung the flung, I flung the covers back and marched over to the book, which was about chest height. I waved my arms above it, below it, around it. No strings, no wire, no joke. What's going on? I scratched my head and yawned again. Mickey. Mickey. Was the voice coming from the book? I grabbed it with both hands and pulled. It resisted. I pulled harder. It pulled back. I strained, pulling with all my might, digging my heels into the carpet, straightening my backbone, putting every ounce of everything I had into getting the book into my grasp. The book stayed steadfast and I ended up collapsing on the floor. I stared at it, floating in midair, surrounded by its green glow. The air felt chilly, cooler than normal, and now I noticed a musty old smell, probably emanating from the dirt ingrained in the book. Mickey, Mickey. I watched as it swirled around the room, zigzagging, circling, weaving in patterns, finally coming to a rest back on the shelf. I woke up to morning light filtering into the room and jerked up to look at the book. It was sitting on the shelf I'd placed it on the night before. No, it couldn't be. That couldn't have been real. Now I'm doing a scene read from The Haunting of Tiki Island. We waited until after breakfast the next morning when we'd started our tiki hunt before talking about the night before. I wonder 
what made it glow? Mark pulled up stones from along the path. Make sure you put those back, I said, and stuck my hand into the hollow of the fake tree. I grabbed and pulled. Got one, I yelled before Mark shushed me. We don't want people to know, he said, and looked at the tiki in my hand. Number 88, I read from the bottom. Cool. I zipped it into the bag I had around my neck. As for the volcano, I added quietly, maybe it's still active and they're not telling us. We continued our search along the path. It could have been lava. It was glowing from the top and orange stuff was coming down the sides. Then wouldn't it be dangerous for us to be here? Mark tried some tree holes and moved a couple of logs. If it's an active volcano, we're in danger. We found ourselves back on the hillside looking up at the volcano. It looked dormant and there was no glow or rivers of lava now. We glanced at each other and made the silent decision to go on. Following the trail as narrow as it was, we eventually came to a tunnel buried deep in the undergrowth. This must be an old lava tube. I pulled on the vines and made a hole big enough for us to duck through. I swung my, por I swung my torch around, marvelling at the smoothness of the rock. This is cool, Mark whispered, and we moved on. The tunnel wound and weaved, and who knew how many there were or where they led, but we descended, then ascended, and finally emerged into a rather hot room that had red-hot lava running through it. Whoa, this is hot, I waved at the air in front of my face. It's like a sauna or a volcano belly. Mark took a few steps toward the flowing river of red and orange heat, slowly meandering on its way past us. If this were real, wouldn't it be hotter and wouldn't we be dead from the heat and fumes, I asked as I searched the cabin. True, Mark replied, so while it may not be hot, make that very hot, I don't think this is real. Remember, Magoo said the island had been childproofed, including the volcano, so this can't be real. He bent down and held his hand over the lava. Not very hot. He lowered his hand until it was nearly touching it. Not very hot at all. Careful, I admonished, sounding like mum and making an inspection of the walls. Ah, steam ducks. I got a burst in the face. Ouch, hot. I saw Mark smell his hand. What are you doing? He looked up. I don't know what this is, but it ain't lava. Just pretend. He stood up and dusted himself off. Let's keep... Whoa! The ground shook and we stuck our arms out to keep our balance. Are we having an earthquake, I yelled, trying to stay on my feet. Or a volcano quake, Mark said, as the rumbling died down. We gasped for breath but found it hard in the steamy air. Let's get out of here, we yelled, and bolted for the tunnel. That's The Bones of Wrath Haunted, out now as an ebook, and also in Two Bone Anthology 2, out under my middle grade name of TK Rathbone, as a paperback large print, trade paperback, case laminate hardcover, and dust jacket hardcover, uh, all good online bookstores.